Today's episode of Inside Gaming Daily is brought to you by Movement. You can get 15% off your Movement order with free shipping and free returns by going to movement.com slash inside. Hey everyone, welcome back to Inside Gaming Daily Monday. That's right, it's Monday. We got some major Call of Duty news for a Monday. There's been a huge shakeup in who's developing next year's oh. installment. Yeah, apparently the current version was a big mess, so Activision is turning to one of its tried and true franchises to bail them out. Black Ops. Yeah, you might be thinking, wait, we just got a new Black Ops last year. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like you're gonna get another one sooner rather than later. <laughs> yeah, if that sounds like a panic move to you, you might be right. After 16 years of Call of Duty, it might be finally time to press F to pay respects to the old girl, right, Lawrence? Yeah, he did it, he did it. That one's for Spacey. Yeah, 2020 might be the last year for Call of Duty as we know it. Whoa. Right. We might outlive the old girl, we'll oh, find no. out. Uh, that is unless Treya can nail a Hail Mary in terms of sales. No way. Yeah. Well, yeah, they've only got two years to do it. It's a rough situation to no. be in. But before we get into that spicy clickbait, thank you for clicking on it, by the way, <laughs> let's cover the news first. So Kotaku broke the story over the weekend and involves behind the scenes fighting and a franchise that's struggling to sell games in this new free to play Fortnite era that we all live in. Hail Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready for Call of Duty Floss Dance Edition. Kill me. And we should stress that this story doesn't involve this year's upcoming Call of Duty game, which hasn't been announced yet, but it's widely expected to be the new Modern Warfare oh. from Infinity War. Whoa. I'm excited. I, I mean, not really. Uh, <laughs> this is a Call of Duty game for 2020, and for that one, Activision was planning for Raven, which historically has been a support studio, to co-lead the game alongside Sledgehammer to make a game set during the Cold War. Whoa, Lawrence. That actually sounds awesome. It does. It does. I really like Raven, and they haven't had a chance to make a game since Singularity, and they're really good at it. They've been making Call of Duty multiplayer for the past decade. That's great. Yeah. They've been doing nothing but making the world's well, formerly most popular multiplayer first person shooter. <laughs> but yeah, for this one, a lot of people expected it to be set in Vietnam, but apparently that's out the window now. Treyarch is in charge of the 2020 game and it's expected to be a new Black Ops. Cool, fast. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big departure from the rotating schedule that Activision has had in place since 2012. We get a game for Treyarch, then Infinity Ward, then Sledgehammer, basically they would cycle every year, so each studio had three years to make a game. So yeah, why is Treyarch taking over on such short notice? Well, according to sources within Activision, there was some behind the scenes heat between Sledgehammer and Raven, which is kind of a bummer oh. to hear about. Tucker reported that their staff are said to have argued frequently during the past year of development on Call of Duty 2020, and two people familiar with the project described it as a mess. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sledgehammer as a company has brand new leadership these days. That's because last year, its co-founders, Michael Condry and Glenn Schofield, had left the studio. Oh, that's a good. Yeah, no, it's that's not, not good. good. That's never good. Those guys who started it. Might be why they're, they're having such a problem. That's what's so weird about this, is Raven has worked with every Call of Duty developer, again, for the past decade. Yeah. And if they've had problems, they've kept it pretty squashed, but apparently this year's just been an issue. So. Why now? What's the beef? It's probably the leader of the Oh, yeah. <laughs> ow, ow, that's what happens to the kids. But I heard that. That was a meat slap. You can't copyright dances. We're rich. <laughs> as for Call of Duty as a whole, it's not doing so great these days. Yeah. Right, Lars? I mean, it's, it's doing as well as it ever has, which by some business standards. It's kind of this. Well, because the problem is it did this. Yeah. Once you do that. Bang. It peaked a yeah. while ago. And then I'm sure someone said, there's only one way up, everyone. It, it's up. Yeah. That's it. That's all we can ever do. It's like, yeah, that's kind throw, of a Throw problem. a rock and see what happens. So if we take a look at some sales numbers for the franchise, and this is according to Statista, which is, you know, it's not entirely accurate, but we don't have 100% accurate numbers because we're not Activision, so there you go. But it's clear that Call of Duty's best days were back in 2010 to 2015, you know, the machine of Ah, uh, back called. when you just graduated high school, going yeah. to college. Yeah. What a magical summer that Free was. Free-to-play games weren't <laughs> dominating. I, this is like world. a Dragonheart situation. You got Machinima and Call of Duty, uh -huh. and once you once oh, one dies... Right. I don't know what you're talking what? about. I've seen that movie. <laughs> so the, the high mark for the entire series was Modern Warfare 3. Sold more than 30 million copies in 2011, followed closely by the first Black Ops in 2010. So that um. was clear. As you can imagine, based on the density of YouTube kill montages, the height of Call of Duty. And while the series still sells millions of copies, recent games haven't done quite as well. Call of Duty World War II sold less than 20 million in 2017. Last year's Black Ops 4 sold 14.3 million, and 2016's Infinite Warfare sold 13.6. So yeah, Infinite Warfare clearly a very low point for the franchise. It's been sort of climbing out of the grave since then, but it has yet to reach the series peak and definitely has yet to blow past it, which is kind of the problem. And yes, that's still a lot of copies, but these are big budget AAA games that cost a lot to develop and market. Yeah, just to use one example, Modern Warfare 2, way back in 2009, cost 200 million to make and market. So that was a long time ago, and that cost a lot of money, so yeah. we can only assume those games cost around that or more now. So to clarify, these are not indie games that can turn a profit off a few million copies sold. No, no, no. These games are made with the assumption that they need to do a lot of volume to make their money back. And yeah, not to mention that in business, if you ain't growing, you ain't showing. Is that what they say? No, no one's ever said that, but I just said it. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure Bobby Kotick says all sorts of things 
when the doors are closed. It does rhyme though. That makes it true in business anyway. My pubes are red. Uh, Lawrence, put it in actual terms. Yeah, so this is something that's interesting to see, especially if you follow investor calls and stuff like that. And I do, because I'm a giant dork. If your franchise isn't showing year over year growth, it gets harder to reinvest it next year, especially if you have to justify that cost to investors. They're gonna want you to put your money into something that has unlimited growth potential. So to normal people like you and me, mm -hmm. uh, it just makes sense to continue making something forever as long as it makes money. If you're just bringing in money, why not keep doing that thing? Well, for most businesses, especially when competing with other products that are finding way bigger markets and extracting way more money out of them, investors would rather you take that time and money and put it into developing a new product that could grow to be much bigger. You mean like Fortnite? Exactly. Uh. Yes, exactly like Fortnite. So <laughs> Treyarch is back making Black Ops, but with only two years to pull it off instead of three, that's kind of where we're at because Activision needs to find something to bust Call of Duty out of its shell right now. It's got a wet blanket over it. That means yeah. there's gonna be some uh, more long hours. Some of the company oh. are already kind of bracing for that, according to Kotaku. I Sorry know. to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. But others said they're looking forward to oh. it and quote, have a solid game plan that isn't likely to change drastically, unlike their last two projects. Since it's 2020, the new Black Ops game is expected to be a cross-gen game, bridging the current PS4, Xbox One era and the upcoming next-gen consoles. That may boost their sales a little bit. Like Ghost? Yeah. <laughs> Ghost was like the first big fall. Oh, this is a Black Ops, Lauren. Oh, oh, Ghost. Remember the dog's mouth? <laughs> <laughs> Look at these fish. Look at them swim. Move away. Fish. One other thing to note, while Black Ops has historically been a really profitable series for Activision, the fourth game apparently didn't hit the publisher's expectations. Right, that might have been one of the reasons why Activision Blizzard laid off hundreds of employees earlier this year. But at this point, with the clock ticking, maybe Activision decided that another Black Ops game was better than not having anything at all in 2020, which is where it looked like things were heading, right, Lawrence? I guess so. Yeah, based on whatever reports we're getting about Sledgehammer and Raven butting heads. But Activision has also apparently been looking at the Fortnite of the world, because of course they have. They're also looking at free-to-play models, about time. So the next Black Ops could even include a free-to-play component for the upcoming Modern Warfare game. Good. That's 2019. That makes sense. It makes sense, but it's also like, that's a point of no return. Once you go free to play with something, you can never take it back. Yeah. And that's kind of a part of the larger story here about what's affecting Call of Duty these days. Fortnite continues to be the 800 pound gorilla of competitive shooters because everyone's playing it and it's making so much money. It's making so much money that the company's allowed to buy their way into an entirely different market. Fortnite is arguably the highest profile game in the world and it's become what all game publishers dream about. A platform to sell its audiences more and more digital treats. Oh. I mean, they're building an entire platform off of Fortnite and they're parlaying it into entirely new wings of business. So it's incredible. Yeah, that's exactly what businesses want. That's and you, you can it. bet investors are going to EA and Activision being like, why is Epic doing that? That should be yeah. our money. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, that space used to be occupied by Call of Duty games, that's right, it did. among others. But the fact that Fortnite is free and also pretty high quality means that it's amassed a much bigger pool of users and children and ultimately has taken audience away from the Call of Duties of the world. Call which... of Duty had its time, you know? It was on the top for years. It, call, it was going to last forever. And that's what happens. It's the yeah. peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys in life. The only game that has really challenged it lately, Fortnite, is Apex Legends, which used the exact same model. But looking at that, while Apex briefly eclipsed Fortnite, that didn't last for too long, and now Fortnite has regained its dominance because of movies like Endgame, I guess. <laughs> went, that helps. That's right. So where does that leave Call of Duty, my favorite franchise <laughs> of all time? All I want them to do is make billions of dollars. What's going on? Yeah, just make Call of Duty forever, please. Uh, I don't know. Activision's still trying to figure that out, obviously, but we can discuss some possibilities. Okay. First off, and this seems like the most obvious, why won't Activision just make Call of Duty free to play? It seems like it's an easy call, right? At least the Battle Royale mode, right? Yeah, I something. Right? It's there, it right? exists, and I'm sure the numbers are dwindling. Just do it. All we can do is look at what Activision has and hasn't done in the past and theorize what their business mode is or what they're operating under. They're not staying away from it because they're stupid. They're staying away from it because they have a business plan. So let's try and figure out what that is. I think if Activision were open to the idea, they would have done it a long time ago. Yeah, absolutely. So there's gotta be a reason, right? Free to play games have found success in huge audiences for years now. And the fact that Activision has held out this long implies that they're intent on maintaining Call of Duty is a $60 purchase. Because once you go free to play with any game, you can never, ever go back. They can't charge for League of Legends. Not yeah, right? They can't do that. Right. I feel like Halo has been in the same place where if you give the multiplayer away, you never get to charge for it ever again. Yeah. All right. You can charge for DLC, you know, weed leaf skins and whatnot, but nobody's going to drop $60 for Call of Duty in any form once it's out there for free, especially on a disc. So it seems to me that Activision wants to maintain Call of Duty's market value as a $60 product as opposed to giving it away for free and hoping that they can monetize it out there because that's just not the perception of the product. I don't know. I mean, it seems like they're nearing the end of a particular tether, mostly because they seem to have tried absolutely everything else they can think of and it's just kind of working. Black Ops 4 had a competitive multiplayer, a full zombie mode, and a full battle royale mode, all of which were pretty damn solid they games. Really Played them all, they were all right. really good. And even with that package, it couldn't break through to better sales performance. Mm -hmm. So we're guessing that Activision is scratching their heads over that one. Like, why is this thing that's been around for 20 years not cool anymore? Yeah. What happened? <laughs> I mean, they did everything right with Black Ops 4, theoretically. Yeah. It worked with Guitar Hero and 
Uh, Tony Hawk, how are those doing? Oh boy. <laughs> what? They're out of business? <laughs> Another thing uh, Lawrence brought up, Call of Duty is rated mature, yeah? In addition to sort of everyone thinking of Call of Duty or Activision, especially wanting to think about it as a $60 game, it's just not the kind of product that can convert easily into a free-to-play thing right now. They'd have to roll it back to an ESRB of teen to get it into kids' hands, and even then it might be a little weird. You're kind of opening yourself up to some weird news stories about like, oh, the series that had no Russian as a level where you get to gun down a bunch of innocent civilians. Now it's for eight-year-olds, and you yeah. can play it on your phone. <laughs> we'll see, man. I think they're gonna have to do some PR massaging to change Call of Duty's image to make it a viable free-to-play product, especially if they want kids stealing their parents' credit cards to, to play it. So the news that Activision's finally willing to rethink the fundamentals of what Call of Duty is, is probably telling me that we're starting to see the end of Call of Duty as a $60 product. Oh! Oh, oh, please, Lawrence, I want to give him $60. I know, Bruce I know, loves you really giving like... away money. Oh, I bought Anthem! <laughs> <laughs> this year's Call of Duty, 2019 Call of Duty, probably going to be pretty predictable. We'll see that during the NBA Finals on May 30th, like we do every year. I'm actually really curious to see what that is, yeah. But 2020 may be the last time we ever see Call of Duty as we know it. Wow. I don't know. Which means that 17 years, almost two decades. That's great. Duty. That's really great, man. You know, Lifetime of a product like that? That's huge. People were born when the first Call of Duty came out are almost now old enough to smoke a cigarette. <laughs> or play Call of Duty. <laughs> Doesn't really mean Call of Duty is going to disappear entirely. Yeah. It's still a money-making franchise. It's probably gonna live on as a service game. It's just not gonna be sold for 60 bucks every year, which 17-year no! run's not bad. <laughs> that's, not bad. <laughs> that's really great. So enjoy those uh, midnight trips to GameStop to pick up your pristine game disc while you still can. Who the f does that? 2019, <laughs> I'll see you there. It's cold outside. <laughs> Pretty soon it's all just gonna be a seasonal content with a bunch of skin packs as far as the eye can see. Ah, uh, battle passes. <laughs> My favorite thing. Season four of Call of Duty. Wow. My whole body's a weed. <laughs> Today's episode of Inside Gaming Daily is brought to you by Movement. It's almost summertime, you guys. Who's that, who's that sexy games journalist walking down the street with his cool style and his feet that can't be beat? It's Lawrence wearing Movement sunglasses. That's right. It's cool. It's time for summer. It's time to look good in the sun. And that's what Movement can help you do. This Los Angeles-based accessories brand, Movement that is, has hundreds of premium affordable sunglass styles to choose from, like these. These are the Stranger. I basically wanted to look like I'm um, a cool front man in a jazz band, and that's why I chose these. Uh, these are constructed with durable acetate and lightweight materials for that perfect, reliable fit. You don't have to choose between style and function, baby. You can have both. Uh, they have hundreds of styles based on what you're into. Uh, do you want 90 skinny frames? Do you want classic round sunnies, or do you want cool, stylish, jazzy shades like these? Obviously these, but you can choose whatever you want. Uh, we also have a special offer code for you guys, 15% off with free shipping and free returns by going to movement.com slash inside. That's M-V-M-T, movement.com slash inside for 15% off. Keep the sun out of your eyes. The Inside Gaming Way with Movement Sunglasses. Thank you for the sponsorship. Once more, that's 15% off, free shipping and free returns by going to movement.com slash inside. Thank you, Movement. What uh, happened? Whatever happened in the next few months was not cool or oh. awesome. Oh. By the end of 2018, Schofield announced that he was leaving Activision, oh. saying it was time to try something new. But the IP! Uh, which <laughs> apparently he was trying at Activision, but they oh. said, No! You may call duty, ain't gunned bad man and pull a trigger. In the interview, it sounded like the canceled 